Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi, family. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura. And we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even the Taylor Bowl. Somehow. <laughs> we, we love to watch yep. and we love talking about it even more. <laughs> Today we're watching Super Bowl, Super Bowl 58. 58. Yes. Super Bowl 58. 2023 NFL season, fantasy football highs and lows, hard knocks in season with the Dolphins, and of course, Taylor and Travis, Kelsey. So much sports to talk about today. I so hope much you're ready. to talk about. <laughs> Big episode. <laughs> get ready. But before we get into it, make sure y'all, you're following us on all our social medias at Sisters Who Watch. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, we're all there. And yes. also make sure that you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and our Apple Podcasts and Spotify pages so you see when we drop new episodes and you can also auto-download our episodes too. So make sure you also give us five stars. That would mean yes. so much to us. Five stars. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Shelby. Before, you know, we dive in, get into the background, we just mm -hmm. also want to acknowledge the Kansas City uh, parade and the shooting that happened there. Mm -hmm. We're sending our love, thoughts, prayers, and condolences. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just sad to see another <sighs> mass shooting in America. Uh, especially you know. it's such yeah. a joyous occasion, right? When you're supposed to be celebrating. Instead, you're now like running for your life and concerned. That's not what <sighs> yeah. should be happening. So definitely praying for... Um, the lives that have been effective. You know, there was one death and multiple injuries. So just hoping that people um, can recover from this physically as well as mentally, because it's a, definitely like a shocking and draining experience. Of course. And we hope that this can also inspire change, you know, of course. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh -huh. um, yes. And did you hear that Taylor Swift donated apparently a hundred thousand dollars to the family who um oh the, the woman one who passed casualty. away yeah the person who passed away so wow. yeah so Taylor Swift donated the to least that Taylor family. can do that's great <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> we see how Shelby on feels note. <laughs> like, on that note tell us about the background give us a background of the season, the yes. Super Bowl, everything, oh, everything. Oh, man. So if you didn't know, Laura and I grew up with sports fans. We are wearing some para. Laura repping the Niners. I'm repping yes. the Saints. And we just grew up in a household, watched a lot of football, watched a lot of sports. Sadly, we're Jets fans. But just have a love of, like, sports, athletics, being active. So we've been watching football since we were kids. Yes. And hopefully if you listen to our past football episodes, we have an episode on Super Bowl 57 from last year, as well as an episode on Hard Knocks, New York Jets, and the 2023 NFL season kickoff from last fall. So check those episodes out if you haven't. We have some good analysis yes. on the games and preparing for the season. And the whole Aaron Rodgers fiasco and our reaction to that and his injury yes. and everything. So yeah, make sure to check out our Hard Knocks episode and last year's Super Bowl episode when we're, where we talk about last season. Um, yes, we love sports and um, I currently live in the Bay Area, so um, I have happily adopted the 49ers, but also... Our mom is from Sacramento, so she grew up as a Niners fan, um, mm -hmm. and our grandpa, uncle, they also have the Niners. So also, we've been rooting for the Niners our whole lives, so I'm not just a bandwagon fan, I will say that, <laughs> but I'm rooting for them more enthusiastically since living here. Um, yes. And Shelby has um, adopted the Chargers, kind of? Yeah, you know, I live in Los Angeles now. <laughs> And when I moved, the Rams won the Super Bowl, but I just wasn't really into the Rams. Never been like my favorite team. And the Chargers, their quarterback, Justin Herbert, I saw him play at the Senior Bowl. So it's had more of a connection 
Sadly, the charges have been kind of a joke since I've been in LA, but they have hired Jim Harbaugh as the coach. Whoa. Woo! So I'm feeling good. I feel like the Chargers could be a bounce back year. The Chiefs are in their division, which is a concern. <laughs> you know, we're just going to believe. We're just going to believe. Go Chargers. That's all we can do. Go Chargers. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Okay, so if you listen to our Hard Knocks episode, um, uh, we talked about who, our predictions for the season. And yes. we made our picks. Who's going to make it to the Super Bowl? And I said the Niners and the Bills. And I was, I was half right. I you was pretty close. close. And the Bills, you know, they made it to the playoffs. So uh-huh. not bad. Shelby, what, what was your Super Bowl pick? <laughs> leading question uh it was eagles dolphins first of all both of those teams did make the playoffs so Mm -hmm. don't come for me at the time when it was the beginning of the season the eagles looked really good they actually started the season like eight and one and then took a nosedive um the dolphins similarly started out the season really strong and then took a nosedive it just happened Mm. the two teams i picked did not end on a high note but at least they made it to the playoffs. Yeah. <sighs> what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the regular season. <laughs> um, what were some of the highlights from the regular season, Shelby? You know, for me, it was seeing some like new contenders or like teams that you didn't think would be really good. Like the Houston Texans, they drafted CJ Stroud as their quarterback in the NFL draft. And he played awesome. And D'Amico Ryan's new head coach who had been on the Niners staff um, was coaching so well. And their team ended up like winning the AFC South division. And then CJ Stroud won rookie of the year at the NFL honors. And it was just really exciting to see from a first year head coach and a first year quarterback that they played so well. They really overachieved. I mean, the Texans were like awful. And to go from being awful to like in the playoffs, winning your division and like winning awards, you'd love to see it. So I feel like that was an exciting feel good story. Also the Detroit Lions was another like surprising feel good story for me. Dan Campbell and his like third year as head coach brought his team to win the division and make the NFC championship game. They were a game away from making the Super Bowl. And Mm. they were an interesting team going forward and forth down a lot, doing like two point conversions to win the game. They were very aggressive. And it worked most of the time and got them far, but in the end might have bit them. And you know, might not have been the best choice, some of the choices he made, but they were fun to watch and a feel good story because Detroit had been a city that hasn't had good sports teams in a while and particularly Mm -hmm. the lions like they hadn't been in the playoffs in forever hosted a playoff game in like 30 years so it was a big deal so it was an exciting story for me to see them play well this year for sure such an underdog story i know so many people were excited um about them just being in the playoffs period because that was Mm -hmm. huge and in San Francisco in the Bay Area, there's a huge, like, University of Michigan pipeline um, oh. here. And I have a lot of friends who went to Michigan and were so excited about the Lions. So I just know, like, it was such a big deal. And they were close. So maybe next year. Maybe next Not year, but it was a really big deal. Not, cl- <laughs> Not close enough. Yeah. So the Texans and Lions were a happy story. Um But the season also saw some collapses down the stretch. Um, Just happens that two of my Super Bowl picks were those collapses. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Miami Dolphins had started out really strong, but started to lose crucial games at the end of the season. And yes, they had harder schedules, so they're playing like playoff bound teams, but you got to win those games. And a lot of people like to talk about momentum and they were trending downwards like teams like the green bay packers another surprise they started out kind of like so so and then all of a sudden start winning at the end of the season and they were able to go into the playoffs like 
you know, win as a wild card team, their first round. That's crazy. Whereas the Dolphins and the Eagles, who had chances to win their respective divisions, the NFC East and the AFC East, lost too many games down the stretch that lit their rivals, the Cowboys and the Bills, respectively, win the divisions instead. So then they had to be wild card teams in the first round mm-hmm. of the playoffs. Uh, it was tough. Not only for my Super Bowl pick purposes, but as, you know, Jalen Hurts fans were rooting for the Eagles. Yes. And I wanted him to do well. Like, I'm not really a Dolphins fan, right? I don't really care about them. But I had a vested interest. And they let me down. Yeah, that was disappointing. I think... Most black women in America love Jalen Hurts. <laughs> there oh my has gosh, to man. be a stat to see how many black women have become fans of the Eagles since Jalen Hurts was born. Yes, and a stat on women <laughs> becoming Kansas City fans because I of can't. Taylor Swift. <laughs> we got to see- screaming. Yeah, you're we right. Gotta see those stats. Where are those, those stats? stats? Female football yeah. fans because yes, Jalen Hurts year. and Taylor Swift alone. Yes. We're on board. Big year for women in football, you know. <laughs> Go we, we started the trend. We Go were sports. born into the trend. We were ahead of the trend. But now it's yes. cool to like football. Love it for them. Yeah, it is. Go women in football. Um, <laughs> and we talked about hard knocks. We reviewed the preseason one with the Jets. Yes. But we also watched the in-season hard knocks with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. And the Jets was the first hard knocks I had ever seen because everyone was talking about it. So I was like, we okay, I gotta to. watch. And then I realized that it's, it is a really high quality show. And as we talked about and shall be predicted, the Dolphins, you know, were a really highly anticipated team. So to see a team that was doing well in the season, you know, expected to make the playoffs, that was really cool to see. And to see Mike McDaniel, who, you know, is a kooky, quirk, get, quirky guy, is a kooky, quirky guy. <laughs> <laughs> was interesting to see that dynamic, right? Yes, I agree. Finally, a good team on Hard Knocks. I think why I haven't really watched in the past. It's usually like the Cardinals or the Lions when they weren't good. Like it's usually teams that aren't playoff bound or like haven't been good in a while. So I was like, oh my gosh, wow, playoff bound team. This is so cool. And it was so fascinating to see their practices and like see them get ready to like play opponents, like big games, like against the Ravens and the Chiefs. But right. sadly, we saw the demise of their team on I television. Uh, I know of all the teams to, to to follow, we saw them have key injuries to like defensive players like Jalen Phillips, who were playing really well, and like Bradley Chubb. We saw them lose like embarrassing games. One of the biggest games of the seasons, they went into Baltimore to play the Ravens, and they got destroyed. Somehow, we see Tyreek Hill have his house gun fire. Anything that could go wrong for the Dolphins happened while they were on hard knocks. So it was honestly insane to see it all happen. And then, of course, they lose their last game of the season to the Bills, meaning they don't win the division. And then they have to play in, like, the coldest game in, like, 30 years against the Chiefs Ugh. in Arrowhead. What a nightmare. And this nightmare. is a team that plays in Miami, Florida. They're not trying to be in kansas city when it's freezing negative like 20 degrees yeah like everything that could go wrong went wrong for them i know that was it was tough now on to fantasy football so guess what guys i won our fantasy football league laura's san francisco legends i forgot the name of my team but i came in first clearly that's how much you care (laughs) i care a lot i care a lot And yes, so we have a family league and I came in first for the second time. Yes, I have a really strong track record, but I, in the regular season, I should not have won. I really should not. Because in the regular season, I was 68. It's giving Kansas City. It's giving a scheme. It's giving, there's a script. It's it's giving giving plot. It's (laughs) It's giving NFL script. Honestly, I should. I don't know how I won our fantasy league. I was six and eight in the regular season. I was under five hundred. Make our it mom, make sense. 
our mom was like 10 and 1 or like 10 and 2. Something crazy. Something like really crazy. She was dominating the whole time, but she didn't even make it to the final. And she was really sad. Right? She should should have won. She had yeah, the best Our team. mom should have won team. for sure. But Laura, I should not in the won. classic Chiefs Patriots way, um, I, won I, I the made season. it happen. I had a Christian McCaffrey, CMC. <laughs> Go 49ers. He was a star of my team. I drafted Jalen Hurts first. He was always consistent. McCaffrey was my second draft pick. C- can't go wrong with them. Can't go wrong with them. And Joku was a star. He was a surprise. Um, yeah. So I, I somehow pulled it out. I don't know how. I don't know how. But we did. Well, Shelby, there were some really big injuries this season that, of course, impacted the, of the normal season, but also fantasy. Yes. Our mom, like, drafted Nick Chubb, who's, like, typically really good. And then he gets hurt, like, the first week, which is brutal. So then, you know, you have to draft someone new for the team. And there was a lot of that happening. You know, Kirk Cousins got hurt. And then, you know, everyone's favorite, Joe Burrow, Joey B, Joe Cool, got hurt. So that affected fantasy leagues, but also, like, playoff picture. Because typically the Bengals with Joe Burrow are going to be a contender, but right. they weren't this season. So a lot of injuries affected things. The fact that Cooper Cup got hurt for a little bit, yes. which then made Puka Nakua a star, the rookie Surprise. from BYU, who was on our mom's team, but she dropped him and Laura picked him up, of course. Yes, I picked him up because he was doing so well. And then I saw that our mom dropped him. I was like, he's available. I picked Crazy. him up immediately. Yes, so he definitely helped secure my fantasy win. Yeah, there were a lot of surprises. But, you know, there were a lot of surprise underperformers. I just happened uh, this year to pick all the Chiefs for my fantasy team. And they underperformed in the regular season, but somehow won the Super Bowl. Make it make sense. (laughs) So, yeah, Mahomes, Kelsey, the kicker Butker all did not have their best fantasy seasons. So even though I technically was second in our league before the playoffs, I don't really know how because my team just underperformed every week. But C.D. Lamb, I did have on my team and he crushed. So he was by far my best player. He was like my McCaffrey compared to you, Laura. Yes, yes. So yeah, overall our fantasy season, the two underdogs made it to the final, Laura and Jason, and then mom and I, the top seeds, we're fighting for third place. You hate to see it. Brutal. 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 I'm triggered just thinking about it. Oh. <laughs> so let's talk about the playoffs. There were some really tough upsets in the playoffs this year. Yes. So Wild Card Weekend, which is round one, saw some really crazy, shocking games. The main one being the seven seated Packers going into Dallas to face the number two seed and beating them, blowing them out in Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. So embarrassing. As someone who like likes underdogs, I was excited. Like, I don't really care about Dallas, but it was just so embarrassing. And speaking of more embarrassing losses, you then have Tampa beating Philly and Philly was the wild card team, but they had just been in the Super Bowl, right? And even though they hadn't been playing well, they were still clearly the better team. But watching that game, it just looked like they weren't trying to be there. It looked mm. like they were done. They were like, let's go to Cancun. One, two, three, Cancun. <laughs> they were like, out of here. So that was tough. And then I think the br- most brutal loss for us was probably the Chiefs beating the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> It's still, still hard to talk about. We like Lamar. We're fans of Lamarvelous. The the Ravens were clearly the best team all year. They were the number one seed in the no. AFC. And you look back on that game. The Chiefs won 17-10. They didn't score any points in the second half. So the Ravens defense held them. It was playing great. But Lamar and the Ravens offense could do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, so tough. Uh, 
you hate to see it. Everyone was so excited about the Ravens and Lamar, and he won MVP, right? Like his second MVP. He was such yes, he was such a star. This but entire he choked. Season. I'm sorry, I hate to say it. I think he choked. He did uh, not play well. And at this point, if you're in the AFC, you're gonna have to beat Mahomes. Josh Allen hasn't been able to do it. Lamar hasn't been able to do it. It sucks, but it's true. You have to go through him. And the only one who's been able to do it so far is Joe Burrow. Crazy. Crazy. (laughs) Nuts. Okay. That's a great segue to the Super Bowl, a.k.a. the Taylor Bowl, because somehow the season where Taylor Swift starts seeing Travis Kelsey and everyone becomes obsessed with Kansas City, they make it to the Super Bowl. Can you? I still can't even believe that. Um, it's, it's like, it's, what are the chances? And so it's the NFL scripted. script. It's right. Like this was supposed to happen. Because if you yeah. are actually a football fan, right. And you've been watching football all season. You can't say that Kansas city is the best team. There's no yeah. way they were not playing that great during the regular season. Maybe they turned it on for the playoffs, but after the Ravens chiefs game, it's less about, oh, the Chiefs played well and won. It's more like the Ravens choked. And even this Super yeah. Bowl with the Niners, it's like, I can't say no oh, the way. Niners didn't play well. Like, it it just seemed like everything that needed to happen for the Chiefs to win again happened. Right. It was, like, written in the stars. It like, they should the not stars. have won. They should not every... have made it to the Super Bowl. Like, every game, yeah. it was, like, perfect for them. Shall we just give me your thoughts on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? I don't understand why it's such a big story, to be honest. I'll be honest. I'm not like a Taylor Swift fan. Like I'm not a hater. I just like don't understand why people are so obsessed with her. Like it's hard for me to comprehend. Yeah. So the fact that she's the biggest star in the world, I don't get why she's the biggest star in the world. (laughs) Just doesn't compute in my brain. As a football fan, I'm like, Travis Kelsey has been like the biggest tight end, like, forever like he's been a star like for a while so the fact that all these people now know who he is i'm like this is insane like good for the nfl good that more people are paying attention to football like i'm not pressed about cutting away to her in the stands like okay get your coin i know you guys are trying to get people to watch and i also feel like it was a big publicity stunt and of course right you want to believe in love but this all just happens when taylor is about to like release her heiress tour movie and it all is happening right before her global heiress tour if anything this is the best publicity son of all time it's helping her market herself reach new audience apparently she wants to get into like movie making and filmmaking apparently travis is thinking about his like future career trying to be in entertainment this is gold the amount of commercials that i've seen with travis in it he had a lot of commercials before, but his star has just grown. Apparently his podcast is like triple yes. in size. Like this is a cash cow for them. So as much as we want to believe, or some people want to believe it's true love, I'm skeptical. I do think even if maybe there's a connection, they have to know that staying together and being together through this has been great for their businesses and their brands. Mm. Great rant. Yeah, I, and for context, so this happened, like, kind of at the beginning of the season. It didn't happen before the season. Like it in happened the fall. Kinda, yes, it, this happened in the fall after we recorded our Hard Knocks episode. And so basically, Travis Kelsey went to the Air Store. So the Air Store was happening all summer. It was the summer of the girl, right? Beyonce, Barbie, Taylor Swift. Travis Kelsey went to the Air Store, and he had this friendship bracelet that you know that's trendy because of taylor swift and he had one with his number on it that he wanted to give to taylor and on his podcast he was like i went to the heiress tour i want to give taylor my bracelet with my number on it but like i didn't get to see her and then apparently that went viral and then people sent it to taylor swift and then they started communicating after that And then they started dating and she started going to all their games and meeting his mom. And it all happened very, very fast. Like after that podcast episode, it was like within a month or so she was at the games with his mom. Like it was just very fast. And I think to me, 
that just didn't really make sense. But, you know, they're both in their 30s, right? Like, maybe they're just, you know, maybe they just want to move fast. I don't know. But the fact that she's, like, cozying up with his mom and, like, Brittany Mahomes, it just feels, it's just so bizarre. So bizarre. Um, yeah. We have known about Travis Kelsey for such a long time. And our mom actually watched the show Catching Kelsey. We all did. It. We all did, yes. She found it when it first aired, like, 10 years ago. And she was like, guys, there's this really cute guy on Kansas City. He has this show where he's dating, like, 50 women. <laughs> and she turned us on to the show, and we all watched it together. Crazy. So we've been on the Travis Kelsey train for a really long, long time. time. Like, and over he was with years. the black woman he met on that show for a long time. Yes. And apparently, like, Travis Kelsey's publicist, like, posted something on her story, kind of, like, mocking Taylor Swift. Like, by accident, she, like, quickly deleted it. Oh, but no. I saw this, and I was like, oh. so, I think, is it a PR stunt? Probably. Are they actually dating? Probably. It's a, I think it's a company. Yeah, I think it's both a both can be true. Like, I think that yeah. they can be dating, right? Getting to know each other, but also realize that this is huge publicity. And they should take advantage. This has been huge for her. You know, she huge. just won Album of the Year at the Grammys. Her fourth time winning Album of the Year. <sighs> Don't get me started. Interesting. But, like, is it? does it help that she's the most famous person in the world right now in dating? You know, a Super Bowl champion? Nine persons of the One, year? Probably. Yes. Probably. 1,000%. All of it is helping her. And she's about to release a new album, right? Everyone's talking about her. So, you know, she's a very smart businesswoman. Hey. You know, Go off. Go off, I guess. Business genius. Yes. Get it's your genius. coin, Taylor. Get your coin. Yeah, she is a capitalist to the max. Like, she's, she she's is doing it. queen capitalist. She is Mrs. Capitalist. <laughs> the biggest capitalist out there. She is. And, you know, honestly, I applaud. Like, she's, hey. she's doing the thing. She And plus, Travis Kelsey is, like, 6'5". He's this huge, attractive oh, man. Hot. Like He's a hippo. Yeah. Go get it. Like... <laughs> Do your thing. Yeah, she's having a Live good your life. time. She's Live having your life. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to talk about all the random her posse at the Super Bowl and that, you know, Ice Spice was at the Super Bowl with Taylor Swift. I don't know why. Are they I friends? I have a lot of questions. So she Taylor Swift did a remix of one of her songs. I don't remember the name, but Ice Spice oh. was on the remix. Oh. I think apparently, like, so they've done some performances together, but to be her plus one at the Super Bowl, that just, I, I was, like, very Publicity shocked stunt. to see that. Yeah, I mean, like, it make, good for Ice Spice. Good yeah, for Ice good Spice. Yeah, good for Ice Spice. It makes sense that someone that Blake Lively would be there, because they're yeah. friends, and Blake Lively has been they've at been a friends. few of, like, the football games that Taylor's been to. So yeah. Blake has been in the posse for a bit. The Ice Spice yes. thing was shocking. I did not see that coming. And also Lana Del Rey was also in the booth at the Super Bowl um, with Taylor. Yeah, it was, it was, I... it was wild. And Jason Kelsey was being memed a lot. He like was <laughs> excitedly shoved Taylor at some point. At a prior yeah. game, right? He took off his shirt and was like so pumped. Like Jason's been having a good time. Oh, yeah. Jason Kelsey also, he is just exploding. Like, everyone's talking about him and his wife now. Like, I see Jason Kelsey all over my feed. And I'm like, this, like, everyone's talking about him. It's absolutely nuts. And um, what's crazy is Jason Kelsey was probably the most popular center in football before this. Right? Yes. That's not a popular position. People are like, what's the center? The center is the person that hikes the ball to the quarterback on the offensive line. So that's a very important position. But you typically don't know the names of those people. But you yes. know who Jason Kelsey is because he's like a Pro Bowl, All Pro center. He's been on the Eagles his whole career. He's a Super Bowl with the Eagles. So he's like a really good player and people know him. But because his brother's Travis Kelsey and they have a podcast and now his brother's Dan Taylor Swift, he has like exploded too. Exploded. It's, like, it's interesting. I feel like it would be different if they were nobodies, but they like are really good players and like had personalities before this so it's yes. just like catapulting them <laughs> yeah and we also got to talk about travis kelsey's moment with the outburst he had with andy reed on the sidelines everyone was talking about that people are like oh travis kelsey apologizes for shoving andy reed like it was <laughs> such a big deal 
Yeah, it seems like he might need anger management or something. Like, what's Ooh. going on? Like, it was very intense. Oh. I mean, I saw a black player tweet, like, not to make this racial, but, like, if he Ooh. did it, he'd probably be, like, thrown out of the league. And I was like, I do think there's definitely Ooh. privilege when you're Travis Kelsey, the profile you have, like, oh, yeah. shoving your coach like that. Not every player can do that and get away with it. No. Because to my knowledge, there's not been a fine. There's not been any kind of punishment for doing that. When you're playing sports, it can get heated. You're passionate. You're emotional. But you should never shove or yell at your coach. Come on. No. It, yeah, and I'm it was like, bizarre. Was that an ache for Taylor? Is she concerned now? <laughs> <laughs> I saw those like tweets, those stories. Like, like oh, is Taylor going to want her man to be so angry? Do you think their end game to quote a Taylor Swift song? See, I wouldn't even know that there's a Taylor Swift song called Endgame. I would be shocked. I think for Taylor, genuinely, this has probably been fun. She never oh, was yeah. into football. She's never into sports. She's never dated such a macho guy. Like, I feel like that's fun. The press she's getting, she's reaching a new audience. Right. Right? Like, these dads, these macho football players. She's dated so many different people that it's hard for me to think that Travis Kelsey would be her endgame. But... You know, crazier things have happened. But if I had to guess, I'd say no. Yeah. I've also asked Taylor Swift fans this. I was like, do you think, you know, they're going to last? And most of them say no. You know, she could surprise us. Obviously, we wish her, you know, nothing but happiness. (laughs) But imagine the music. Everyone's been saying, imagine the music if they break up. Like, that's going to be, that's going to be a great album, you know? So we'll see. We'll see. Crazy. Yeah, I personally don't. I don't see it, but maybe she needs something different. And Travis Kelsey is different, you know? Yeah, he's not Harry Styles. He's not Joe Allen. He's not John Mayer. He's not Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, she definitely is moving away from the artist, actor, singer type. He's the opposite. (laughs) Totally. Totally. Yes. Okay. We got to talk about the actual game. That was our (laughs) Taylor Swift segment. Okay, so this was a rematch of the Niners-Kansas City 2020 game, um, which also was the yeah, Chiefs winning. not a fun watch. Yeah. Yeah, so coming into it, I was a little disappointed because I did not want the Chiefs in it because I knew if they were in the Super Bowl, they were likely to win. Yeah, so that's I why agree. I was a little annoyed. And I also thought the Niners hadn't looked that great the last few games, right? They almost lost to the Packers. They almost lost lost to the Lions. So I was a little concerned. I was like, have they been playing that well now that the Super Bowl against the Chiefs? So I was a little skeptical going in. And it was honestly felt like it was inevitable that the Chiefs were just meant to win. Talk about the NFL scripts. Like, I was a little dejected. I was rooting for the Niners, but the whole time I had a sneaking suspicion. And the game was a little messy right there were fumbles there were a lot of penalties but it was back and forth and the Niners actually had a lead at halftime it was a very competitive game like it was really entertaining to watch I was at several different Super Bowl parties watching being in San Francisco like the city was on fire like everyone was so excited for the game and just walking around the street like it was just such a oh I wanted them to win so bad because I was like I'm gonna go to the parade I was like hopeful because like I'm you know I'm gonna speak it into existence I'm gonna manifest a San Francisco win (laughs) so that I can you know experience that I know know, um, and Christian McCaffrey was on my vision board so I thought that could be positive right but it wasn't and you know he had a pretty good game like he did have a fumble but he played well Brock Purdy played well Nick Bosa and Fred Warner and the defense played well. Like, the Niners played well for the most part. It was just the kicker missed an extra point. Some of the coaching calls to, like, they didn't run the football that much at the end, which I thought was a little suspicious given McCaffrey had done well running the ball. But I don't think there's something you can point to and be like, oh, they did this and they lost because of it. Right. Which is what's tough. Yeah. You want to like be able to point the blame and like have a reason. But, but you can't. You can't. Yeah. Tough, tough, tough. We got to talk about Usher. Something, it was like something, something happy. The halftime so, show. The halftime show. So coming in, what were you uh, expecting when you, they first announced Usher? Well, I thought it was smart because the Super Bowl was in Vegas and Usher has a residency in Vegas. So I was like, look at them. 
making that easy. Very smart. Very smart. You could tell when watching the show that Usher is a performer and he clearly was able to like make this a real show probably because he's been doing a show in Vegas. Like it felt very well orchestrated, organized. It definitely is nostalgic for me as a millennial. So I was excited. I was ready. And I haven't been able to go to his residency because tickets were too pricey. So I was like, I am ready to get my Usher residency experience. (laughs) Yes, get your tickets. He's going on tour. And Shelby and I, we went to Vegas this past year. And we looked into tickets because everyone's talking about his residency. Yeah, we wanted so to go. smart because it's blowing up on, on social media that he was a halftime performer and his residency. And we looked in tickets, but they're like it's minimum five hundred dollars to see him in Vegas. And we're like, that's insane. We love you, Usher, but we're not gonna pay five hundred dollars for, not for that. I'm sorry. Um, but he's I I've, I've only heard the most amazing things about his show. Mm-hmm. And fun fact, my first concert ever was an Usher show. So in, bizarre. I think 2010 or 2011. So like Usher's peak. I saw him in Madison Square Garden with a couple friends from like middle school because we loved Usher. <laughs> and I was just like child at this Usher show with like these grown adults. It was wild. Too like, young for sure. <laughs> no, I was not too young. <laughs> I had the best time ever. Iconic first concert. I love Usher. So this was so nostalgic. And I felt like the show, when he was performing, I was like, oh, this is like 2000s, like for black people. Like, that's how I felt. I was like, this felt for the culture. Especially given all of the people he brought out. Yes. Alicia Keys, Jermaine Dupri, Little John, Ludacris, her. I was like, okay. Yes. I love all of the people he brought out. I. I'm a Alicia Keys fan, so I was so excited to see her. But I did not realize people were coming for her yes. voice crack and her singing. I didn't even notice. But a friend was like, did you, what do you think of Super Bowl? Alicia Keys, like, what happened to her? Like, she sounded bad. And I was like, what? And <laughs> apparently when she first started singing um, If I Ain't Got You, her voice cracked and in the edited and in the YouTube version of the halftime, they edit it out so her voice doesn't crack. So there's videos, there's like TikToks and stuff that it shows you the difference. So her voice wow. cracked. And people were saying that she was off key. So I did not even notice. I was like, oh my gosh, Alicia. I was just so into it. I was like dancing. <laughs> I was having time. Yeah. And I loved when they performed my boo and like they were just like holding each other. It was they were really vibing. cute. Right? And the way, I will say, the way Usher was moving, I was like, I forgot how good he is. He, he can was dance. great. He's so good. And on roller skates, too, I was like, that's right? crazy. Yeah, he killed it. What was your favorite song? Ooh, that's tough. I mean, the closing with Yeah was really good. Yeah, that was It good. was like a really good finale. But I liked when he and I, Alicia sang My Boo. I was yeah. shocked he did like Love in This Club. Like that's a song I really like, but I was like, oh, okay. Super Bowl. I know. We're getting Love in he This Club. He did a lot of hits. He did a lot. Yeah, he did a good balance. I'm scared. Yeah, I agree. I also really like My Boo. I wish he did DJ Goddess Falling in Love. Like where was Baby that song? Tonight. I love Deep that song. It's good. Is it? So I think it's a little that. too poppy. He didn't really do too many of his poppy Maybe. songs. It was definitely more R and B, like two thousand five. A lot of people were speculating that Justin Bieber would make a, a an appearance in the Super Bowl halftime show. Like mm-hmm. everyone was like, "Oh, Justin Bieber." Justin Usher Bieber discovered him. Yes. So Usher is responsible for Justin Bieber rising to fame. Um, <laughs> take that as you will. Um, and. A lot of people were surprised that Bieber did not make an appearance, but apparently Usher did ask Justin Bieber to be in the halftime show. But Justin was like, no, like, I just want to be at the game. And he wow. was at the game. Justin was in the stands. He was like, no, like, I just want to, I just want to watch. Isn't that, isn't that wild? That's crazy. So we could have had the Bieber Usher. We could have had it. Blame Justin. Justin, though. you robbed us of it. That would have been great. Right? So Usher was awesome. And also something else unexpected. Overtime. We had the first overtime in the Super Bowl with these new rules. It was competitive. 
but the new rules meant both teams would get the ball no matter what. The Niners got the ball first, scored a field goal. When the Chiefs got the ball second and scored a touchdown, they won. It was classic Tom Brady, classic Patriots-esque. You get the ball second. You don't want it to be in Mahomes' hands because you just have a feeling he's going to march down the field and score. Yeah. So it's just very inevitable. As I've said many times on this podcast, it's giving Patriots, it's giving Tom Brady, and I do not like him we're scarred as jets fans it yeah. feels like tom brady 2.0 so we're a bit more sensitive yeah. to it than most people <laughs> for sure switching gears did you have any commercials that you liked disliked overall how'd you feel about the commercials i feel like they were lackluster my favorite trailer was wicked part one that was good it's one of our most anticipated Titles of the year. And then my favorite trailer was Dunkings. <laughs> Dunkings. The Dunkin' Donuts commercial with J-Lo and Ben Affleck and Matt Damon and Fat Joe and Jeff Arlow. I don't know how much money they spent. Dunkin' clearly has some coin because that was expensive to make, I'm sure. Oh, but yeah. it was like fun and lighthearted and goofy. What about you? Yeah, I agree. None of them stood out. Yeah, the Duncan one was the one I remember the most. There was a Beyonce commercial with Verizon. Do you remember that one? I do. Yeah. I remember being excited about that. I thought that was I was, was curious. Good. I was like, okay, B. I know. She doesn't do commercials. So no. That was, that was fun. Um, yeah, so Duncan and then the Beyonce one, those stood out. Everything else was eh, eh. Okay. Who or what did you love to hate for the Super Bowl and or NFL season? Honestly, all the teams that missed their opportunity and didn't beat the Chiefs. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Shame on Josh Allen and the Bills. Mm. Shame on Tua Tugnavailoa and the Miami Dolphins for all losing to the Chiefs in the playoffs. Particularly the Ravens, because I still don't think <sighs> that the Chiefs were a better team. No. Shame on Jalen Hurts and the Eagles for not getting further in the playoffs. What a collapse. I'm disappointed. Shame on the Lions. They clearly may have been the better team against the Niners, but somehow lost. And then shame on the Niners for losing another Super Bowl to the Chiefs. They uh. single-handedly have given the Chiefs two Super Bowls. What an uh. embarrassment. I'm aligned. I'm aligned. <laughs> and perfect segue to hate to hate. We we have Kansas City. Um, if you couldn't tell, we don't. We're not particularly Kansas City fans. Um, uh, we we appreciate the success, and we can respect the dominance. However, they're the new Patriots, and we cannot respect that. Um, so yeah. Any anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> I was happy for their first ring. Okay, great. Good for you. Andy mm -hmm. Reid, great coach, getting your first ring. But now we're three rings in, and I'm over it. Too much. It's, it's too much. much. Get him out of here. We've seen enough. We've seen enough. Yeah. And also, yeah, we're going to throw in the commercials. The commercials were kind of end this year. Underwhelmed, that really for sure. Bad. Underwhelmed. Okay, love to love. I have Duncan. <laughs> Beyond because the commercial, we, we love Duncan. Yeah, just Duncan. We, like, we're we love big Duncan. Dunkin' Donut fans. <laughs> yeah. Tough being they on need... the West Coast because they yes. don't have many here. They have some in LA, but like barely. But they have like none in SF. No, they don't exist in San Francisco. I think there's one in, o yeah, in Oakland. There's no Duncans out here. It's devastating. And also the celeb sightings this year were yes. unbelievable everyone it, it felt like everyone was at the super bowl beyonce and jay-z bieber and his wife Haley, they were there of course taylor swift and her whole entourage ice spice it just felt like everyone was at the super bowl and there were a lot of people in the stands who we like weren't shown right? i feel like if you like follow celebs on instagram like i follow lena waith and then i see she was at the super bowl i was like oh it's like i think a lot of people were there just for the vibes. It was in Vegas. Yeah. Good teams, good energy. Why not? Apparently it was like the most expensive Super Bowl ticket price ever. ever. Like it was the Crazy. highest average ever. 
So, you know, go off celebrities, I guess. And this was the (laughs) most... And this was the most watched Super Bowl ever. So yes, uh, big Crazy. deal. I don't want to give that credit all to Taylor Swift. I think you know football is getting more popular. Like this season, rating for ratings for football have gone up. So I just think the NFL, whatever they're doing, it's, uh, it's working. working. It's working. People yes. are tuning in. It's more popular than ever. While other ratings were declining. The Super Bowl got 123.4 million viewers. That's insane. Crazy. Ready for our game? Yes. Red flag, Red flag green, green flag. flag. One, two, three. Okay, Shelby. Is it yes. a red flag to watch the Super Bowl for Taylor Swift? Well, considering she was only on screen for 54 seconds, yes. That's a red flag. Are you not there for Usher? Are you not there for the commercials? Are you not there for the vibes, the food? Super Bowl food's great. Get you some wings, some chips, some dip. Are you not there for good sporting events? Are you not there to see hot guys on the screen? Like, I just, (laughs) honestly, it's hard for me to understand why you would tune in for, like, a four-hour event to see someone on screen for less than a minute. Like, Like, it would be different if she was performing, right? It would be different if she was commentating. But you would see glimpses of her every now and then, and then it's released that CBS only showed her for 54 seconds. It's not even a minute. You can watch the highlights of the clips later. You can look on Twitter, but why would you spend four hours of your time just to like see her on screen for 10 seconds every hour? Like, it, uh, Genuinely, I just don't get it. Like as a football fan, I watch the Super Bowl for the football. But I also know people that watch for the commercials, for the vibe, right? They just go to a party to have fun or for the halftime show. So there's so many other reasons to watch. So it's hard to think that you've never seen the Super Bowl before and you're tuning in just because of Taylor Swift when you're barely going to see her on screen. What's the point? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I know a lot of people who, yeah, watch it just for Taylor Swift. Yeah. It's like... Oh, are you watching the NBA game to see Kim Kardashian courtside? No. Like, who does that? That's what some I would have pleaded to. I saw something <gasps> online where it was like, Taylor Swift fans will never know what it's like to lose, right? Because they're one and one. The first season she's in, and they win the whole thing. Yeah, this is <laughs> not what it's so like. Funny. Yeah, that's no. not typical. Most no. people never see a win. The Jets haven't won since, what is it, 69? Like... <laughs> Joe Namath. Our whole lifetime. Okay. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so Swifties, congrats. Laura, are you ready for your question? Yes. Is it a green flag for the same team to win every year? No, it's a bright red flag. It's good for Kansas City, right? It's good for New England when they were winning every single year, right? It's great for that place. But mm-hmm. for the league and for everyone else, who cares? No one cares. It's It doesn't boost morale. I think it's, right, like there should be parity in the league. Having Detroit almost make it to the Super Bowl, like reinvigorated so the whole good. franchise and a city, a state, right? And that was great for the league. But having Kansas City make it to the Super Bowl Ooh. for like three years in a row and win so many times, like, who cares? Who cares? It doesn't matter. And people are like, oh, they're going to three-peat. They're going to three-peat next year. Please. What a nightmare. No. no. That would be horrible. Teams, Please. do whatever you can to not make it happen. Don't make that happen. <laughs> but that's immediately, I remember Tony Romo, who was calling the game, he was like, oh my gosh, one of the only teams ever two-peat, they're going to three-peat next year. I was like, can we not already talk about that? <laughs> no. Not in this San Francisco apartment I am in. Do not talk about three feet. Thank you very much. So no, it's not a green flag for the same team to win every year. No, it's bad. 100% agree. Dynasties are only good for the particular team. The Chiefs probably felt this way when the Patriots reign. They're like, we hate this. We hate parity. And now they love it. After the Super Bowl, this season of the NFL, what are overall thoughts? Is it a wait or watch? I feel like... The actual NFL season as a whole is a wait. I've been scammed. Oh. Given what I watched this season, 
the playoffs, everything, there's no way the Chiefs were the best team. It doesn't feel right to me that the Chiefs ended up winning the Super Bowl. You know, they peaked at the right time. They knew how to win close games and the other teams couldn't figure out how to beat them. So yeah. I, that's what matters at the end of the day. But I do think the halftime show is a must watch. One of the better halftime yes. shows I've seen. Usher crushed it. I agree. I would say the Nick Nickelodeon live stream of the Super Bowl, people were talking about that. Um, I think that was a watch. I didn't watch it, but I saw some clips online. Um, and they did like a parody of like the SpongeBob halftime show. And there was a funny lower third. It showed like Travis Kelsey. And it was like the caption was Taylor Swift's boyfriend, really good at football. And that I was can't. on Nickelodeon. That was on the Nickelodeon Super Bowl live stream. I should have been watching that. Right? I heard that at some Super Bowl parties here in the Bay, some people had both the normal CBS oh, one and then the Nickelodeon one, like side by side. That's a good idea. Um, Next so. time. <laughs> The actual was, game yeah, was decent. The actual yeah. game was entertaining. And I yes. think if you ask Chiefs fans, like, oh my gosh, of course a watch. Or like fans that don't care that much about the Niners, like, oh yeah. But I think our circumstances, voting for the Niners, family ties, the fact that we don't like the Chiefs, it just was a bit of a letdown. But overall, yes. objectively, I can do I can say the game was entertaining and competitive. Yeah, the actual game. The actual game was entertaining. Mm-hmm. I, I will say that. Okay, on to our what to watch segment. Yes, of course, y'all. Off season has started, but it's still going to be busy. You got to pay attention to the NFL drafts. A lot of teams are looking for quarterbacks, like the Chicago Bears, Washington Commanders, and New England Patriots. Team that typically had been dominant, but struggled this year. Right, Bill Belichick is no longer their coach. They have Jared Mayo. Wild. So, big changes. And they're looking for new quarterbacks to keep tabs on who they draft in a few months, who they might trade for. All coaching vacancies have been filled, but still keep tabs. You never know what can happen. And if you're looking for like more content, there's a show called Quarterback on Netflix. Mm. And it features Patrick Mahomes, so season one of the show uh, that came out last year. If you're a Mahomes fan and want to see more of him, you can check that out. You can see him and Brittany and their family, <laughs> if that entices you. <laughs> always sounds so exciting. Yeah, if that's your thing, um, go for it. If you'd like, though, the Eagles, I would watch the Abbott Elementary season three premiere. One of our fave shows, so good. And yes. there are some Eagles making a cameo in the premiere. I will not tell you who. But yes. it was great. I loved it. That was awesome. For those of you who can't live without more Travis Kelsey in your life, <laughs> <laughs> you know, follow his social media, keep track of his relationship with Taylor, and listen to his podcast, New Heights, with his brother, Jason. I'm sure they're going to be talking all about the Super Bowl, all about Taylor, oh, yeah. all about the future. Mahomes stands, check out quarterback. Travis stands, check out New Heights. <laughs> I probably won't be checking them out, but yeah, good for them. Good for them. <laughs> options. Um, yes, options. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Sisters You Watch reviewing the Super Bowl and the NFL season. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, wherever you yes. listen. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go check out our videos there. And go follow us on all of our social media platforms at Sisters Who Watch. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, we're there. So go support us and give us a follow. Yes, we appreciate it very much. And we also want to hear from y'all. Please DM us on social media, comment on our posts. You can email us, sisterswhowatch at gmail.com. Respond to our Q&As and polls on Spotify. We want to know what y'all think and if you have any recommendations on what we should watch next. Thank you so much for your support. Stay watching. Stay watching.